biggest challenge I had in making Lift Me Up was all the advice that I got. I had never made a movie before. Didn't know anything about it. First time. I gave away 70% of that film. I only own a small little, little piece of it. And I'm okay with it because I was smart enough to know that this was my first film and that I was gonna take that entire 22 days of filming and I was gonna go to every department and learn. I wanted to learn all. The biggest challenge that I had was um, letting go of the thing that I loved and that I created and putting it in the hands of somebody that I didn't know and trusting the vision that they would have. I remember sitting in the office and I remember typing the first word and I remember typing the last word. And then I remember seeing it on screen when it started and it ended. And I thought to myself, I did that. I had to have belief. And so I had to make the decision. I could either look at the script and say, eh, I'm good, let's just stick to acting. Or I can do what 97% of the population does, which is, I love the script, I'm gonna do it. Six months, I'm gonna get this done, and in one year, I'm gonna get it made. Or I can do the third thing, which is, I'm gonna put all my time and effort into this film right now. I'm not gonna, no nights off, no, I'm gonna less sleep as I can. Focus on the family, focus on the script, that's it. And I did, and I got obsessed with it. I didn't go a day without writing, and a day without rewriting. I did everything that I could to make sure that that movie got to day one. Nobody has a, a contract to live forever. And if you keep putting off tomorrow, what you could do right now, you have no idea what you can do, you, what you can make of yourself, what you can create. The richest place on the world is the graveyard. Dreams, goals, aspirations, businesses, technology advances, everything has gone to their grave because the person that had that idea decided not to act on it because of fear. Growing up as a kid, like I said, I was raised by my sister, which means I, I had to go everywhere with her. And um, my sister would go and attend this studio near our school called Plum Dance Studio. And as a boy at that age, I would always sit in the back and wait for her classes to be over. And this instinctual thing came up inside me where I wanted to have fun with it. I wanted to entertain. So one day, I'm in the back of the class like I always am and they're dancing and I decided I was gonna get up and follow their moves. And then class was over and the teacher goes, why don't you come back and try it again tomorrow? I said, okay. And every day I would go back, every day. And then their recital came and the teacher goes, would you like to be in the recital with the kids? I said, absolutely. So I remember I was the only boy dancing to California girls, learning kickball changes. And I've always been infatuated with dance. I love it. I love dance. And so, you know, when I re met my wife, dance binded us because our real first date ended with us dancing all night long. My two oldest girls and my youngest daughter are competitive dancers. My middle daughter, Clara, is my, she'll be the one that follows in my footsteps. A few years ago when I was laying with my daughter in bed, we were watching The Social Network. And in the beginning of the movie, Mark Zuckerberg makes this website called like Face Mesh or Hotter Blot or something like that, where you put two girls against each other and you pick which one you like. And my five-year-old daughter looks over at me, she goes, Daddy, you should do that. And I said, I should do what, baby? She goes, why don't you do that with actors? Um, put them against each other and let people vote. And I went, okay. And we put this, we just did this website where we put two actors against each other just for the fun of it. And I called a couple buddies and some, my social network and I had everybody send in a monologue and, and, and we just put them up and just see how fun it was. At the end of that, we had like 90,000 people vote on these actors from like 26 countries. And I remember thinking, whoa, that was awesome. We didn't even mean to do it. We had no, we didn't mean to do it. We just wanted to do it for fun. We were just trying to have a good time. And just recently here, in the last year, I went back to it, but instead of going on a website, we developed an app. And of course I went to dancing because it's in my blood. It's what I am, it's who I am, it's what I know. So I sought out the best dance choreographer in almost in the United States, Stacy Tukey. And, I, and I, I flew out to, to New York and I asked her, I said, would you be a part of this? Would you be a part of me running a competition with dancers? where they dance and the winner would just come stand the day with you. Would you be in? She was like, yes. So we did, we launched it. And it all started for my daughter. As a parent, you wanna to try to say, 
that you're always present with your kids and you're always listening, but that's just not the truth. So when she said what she said, if I hadn't been present, this whole thing might've passed me by. And that's the one thing about being aware. Like we've all been at the right place at the right time and not got rich. It's because we weren't aware of what we needed to do in order to get ourselves there. Awareness is huge.